we can wrap up with the rest of the blood work here and talk a little bit about lipids. So again, on the previous blood work panel from the 6th of March, my LDL was about 170. Then I did a blood work on the 18th of March and my LDLP is significantly higher. Again, you can see the LDL calc there is 207. So LDL will vary day to day. And because I have an LDL of 207 on this one previously, 160, I even had a blood work panel in November, I think, where my LDL was 130. Um, I'm going to have an elevated, quote, LDL particle number. Now, I've done many, many podcasts about why I don't believe the LDL particle number is the end-all and be-all. I don't believe that ApoB-containing particles, chylomicrons, which are ApoB48, LDL, VLDL, et cetera, are inherently atherogenic. And I've asked the question, if they are inherently atherogenic, then why don't we get atherosclerosis in veins? And I haven't heard a good answer for that. The answer that I hear is that we don't get atherosclerosis in veins because there's less pressure in veins. Well, of course there's less pressure in veins because they're in the venous circulation versus the arterial circulation, but it's that pressure in the arteries that damages the endothelium. And that's what causes the beginning of atherosclerosis when the healing of the endothelium is impaired as it is when we're insulin resistant. There's really no evidence that a higher pressure in arteries pushes ApoB particles into the subendothelial space. That process is an active process by which LDL must move across the endothelium. And we know that macrophages do not take up native LDL. That is, if an LDL particle or any other ApoB-containing particle gets into your subendothelial space and is not oxidized, macrophages will not take that up. And macrophages must engulf oxidized LDL particles to make foam cells, which are the beginning of a fatty streak and atherosclerosis. So I believe that LDL is part of a healing process in those arteries and perhaps LDL is moved into the subendothelial space in an active way, but that I really remain unconvinced, and I've talked about this at length on previous podcasts, um, about that LDL and ApoB are directly atherogenic. It is all about the context, which you can understand by knowing how insulin sensitive you are. That was why I started this podcast with the very first metric of a fasting insulin. So um, again, I don't know that it's worth going through this NMR panel. Um, my small LDLP is high because a fraction of your LDL will be small. And if you have more LDL than is expected or if it meets the reference range, you will trigger a high, small LDL. Most of the cholesterol metrics are indicators of insulin resistance. So we're using a poor secondary metric to get a sense of insulin resistance. In fact, if you look at this, um, this NMR profile even gave me a lipoprotein insulin resistance score, and it scored me high when we absolutely know that my insulin resistance is not existent because my fasting insulin is low. And my argument here is that these NMR profiles are, they're really, they're too sensitive. They're not specific enough for what we are looking for. So by too sensitive, I mean, they're giving all sorts of triggers and saying there's lots of cardiovascular risk when I don't believe there's any real good correlation or indication of cardiovascular risk with what it's showing me here. I think there are much better indicators of cardiovascular risk, specifically things like elevated triglycerides, elevated fasting insulin, and overall insulin resistance and metabolic health. So if you look back at my lipid panels, again, my LDL was 130, 160, 207. It varies a lot day to day. And I think that it is high, quote unquote, because I eat lots of saturated fat and animal foods, dairy, cheese, meat, organs, and very little polyunsaturated fat. We know that according to this homeoviscous model and other uh, compelling theories that there's pretty good evidence that when you eat more saturated fat, your LDL goes up. And all physicians worry about this because we're all sort of sold on this false fake paradigm that ApoB is inherently atherogenic. I don't believe it is. I think that LDL is not a problem unless you are insulin resistant. And LDL is not even a problem in itself. It just gets wrapped up in the process of arterial healing. Again, this is contrary to the mainstream perspective, and I hope to have some direct, clear debates with uh, people who feel the opposite way, but so far those people have not been willing to discuss this, which is pretty sad.